prevalent would be is a tough word because it can happen anywhere, anytime, especially dealing with the uh, internet online. Anybody that has access to it can certainly reach out to anyone anywhere again. So I think it's it's common. It's certainly common. Um, and anybody, you know, uh, could run into an incident of, of cyberbullying. I, I think it all starts with a, just a really good relationship with your kids and an understanding and talking with them about internet safety and what to look out for. So they're a little more prepared. So they actually know what it is to be bullied if they are bullied in any, any incidences. Um, but so par red flags to parents of anything would be anything that is kind of next level um, where we think of bullying as you know, a bigger kid on the playground, pushing a younger kid around for his milk money, that kind of thing. And not to minimize it, but that kind of like um, competitive edge or that, uh, you know, um, when kids are, you know, talking to each other and, and kind of, you know, um, making fun of each other and stuff like that, that certainly can become more and more serious. And I think once it reaches a certain level, you know it when you see it. And it's important for those kids to know to come to mom and dad and say, listen, this is what's going on. And specifically what we deal with as far as being the police is crimes that are committed. So when it raises to that level, that's certainly a red flag where we need to become involved. One of the very specific lines would be anytime that, you know, a child is propositioned or threatened to kind of send let's say photos of themselves or something, because now you're actually sending data and information, which raises this to, to, to a crime because, and I'm talking specifically about um, bullying that deals with, you know, nudity and pictures, sexually explicit pictures or videos. Sometimes kids can be threatened to send them. If they don't send them, this will happen or the, you know, and these things now it's kind of elevated. It's really elevated itself to, to a criminal activity. Um, also, you know, just with, um, you know, a pattern of harassment can also raise to a level of crime as well. So, again, it goes back to mom and dad or mom and mom or dad or whoever talking with their kids and getting their kids to be comfortable with them to come with, come to them and say, this is making me uncomfortable. This is what's happening. And then let the adults kind of make the decision. One of the ma major benefits from the Child Advocacy Center and the CPCA over there is that they have a lot of good resources um, to offer kids and, and their families. So it kind of all starts with um, how we would get involved is the child or school administrator or even the parents coming to us and saying, hey, this is what's going on. What should we do? And usually if it's to a certain level of seriousness, it'll, it'll arrive kind of to the detective bureau and find its way to my desk. And that's sort of our specialty is we can get them involved, you know, maybe start with just an interview, just interviewing the kid at the child advocacy center in a child friendly atmosphere um, where there is staff um, and advocates that can offer support groups, offer therapy. And it may not even, may not even be a crime, but it's good to talk with us about it so we can offer some guidance and stuff as well. So that's a really good resource. Um, and like you had said, therapy for kids is huge, you know, getting that rapport build and getting them to kind of talk to somebody who's may not be their, you know, their parents who they may not be comfortable talking to. I think it's really important. Be involved, be involved with your kids in their internet time. You know, unfortunately we see sometimes where, you know, everybody's busy, parents are busy, uh, everyone's busy, kids are busy. And then we see some kids just kind of have unlimited access and data and no control set on their internet access. And that starts, that can become a problem because again, no one's monitoring it. And now you run into where a kid is kind of just, you know, starts in a chat group and he's chatting with friends. And then, you know, certainly somebody could be in there who's not a kid who, you know what I mean? So with, with the wrong intentions and these things kind of snowball. So I think really just having a Number one, having a good relationship as far as talking about cyberbullying and what to do and how to recognize it and have that, um, you know, have that reassurance that your kids are going to come to you and talk to you about it. And then secondly, having some some parental controls on what exactly they're looking at. And lastly, I'd say, you know, it's going to be up to you to, to make the decision. But if you're going to monitor what they're actually looking at, um, it could be very important as well, just so you really know what's going on. 
I know one of the questions is, well, you know, should we go to the police? Should we not go to the police? If you if you have questions, just come to us. It doesn't mean we initiate an investigation and we start, you know, knocking on doors and talking to people. We, we're more than happy to, to help and to talk and to offer um, just some guidance um, and, and give you some good options of what to do.